So new lasers are coming out all the time, and in this video we're going to talk about this one. This is from a company you know well, Xtool, but you probably haven't seen this laser, you probably haven't heard about this laser, but it's here in my shop. And in this video we're going to find out everything there is to know about the Xtool S1, so stick around. Hey, it's Steve, and welcome to my shop. Now, if you've been asleep for the last year, then you think the D1 Pro was the last great laser X-Tool made, and that was the end of it. But they've been busy. Over the last 12 months, they've introduced the F1, which is a combined blue diode and IR laser. Then they introduced the, the P2, which is a 55 watt CO2 laser of all things. And now they're back with this. This is the X-Tool S1. Now, it's not a combined laser. It's not a CO2 laser. It's primarily a diode laser, but you can swap in an IR module if you want. And the beauty is you can also swap in a 20 watt laser module and a 40. So if you want to do heavy duty cutting, you have the 40. If you want to do finer engraving, you can use the 20. Or if you're engraving metal, you can swap out and put in the IR laser module. So very flexible and completely contained. It's totally safe, which is a very nice uh, change in the laser world. And that's the context we'll start with. So let's get going. Now we'll start with a quick flyover, nice clean design. There's only one button on the front, front panel. On the right hand side is the emergency stop button. And there's also an air pump, which you can set automatically or you can adjust to your own desire. Inside the laser, big laser module. Uh, cables are nice and clean. You can swap this module out by pulling that cable on the left hand side and popping two screws and that laser module comes out and you can put in the new one. Everything else inside the cabinet's nice and clean, drag chains everywhere, so there's no cables lying in the, anywhere. On the back, you got power USB, there's also the air assist and a fire suppression system, which they sell, and a, the exhaust port, a four inch exhaust. So nice clean design, everything is exactly the way you would expect a nice enclosed laser to be. So quick look at the specs, at least the ones you can use to compare to other lasers. Uh, the S1 has a spot size of 0.8 by 0.1 millimeters. That's really good for a 40 watt laser. The working speed at 600 millimeters a second or 36,000 millimeters a minute, if you can't do math, is also on the higher end of most lasers these days. It's the working area where you might have the only red flag here. Certainly the width at almost 500 millimeters is uh, larger than most open frame lasers, but the depth is only 319 and that might be a concern for some people. Now, Xtool does offer uh, an option to expand that out with the conveyor to 3000 millimeters. So there are options if you're willing to expand. Connectivity, USB and Wi-Fi, of course, and uh, software, uh, XCS and Lightburn. I've kind of leaned towards XCS for this laser just because there are features that you can't use in Lightburn. It's a Lightburn limitation. The only other thing I want to talk about here is the size and, and weight. It is fairly big. You can see the dimensions. That's basically the length of my arm wide and it weighs 20 kilograms. You can punch that into Google to find out what that is in pounds. But in the end, it's not the kind of laser you're going to pick up and throw in the car and take to a craft fair with you to do live engraving. It's just not that laser. If you, if you need something like that, then go get an F1. Now I will talk about some of the other features that this laser has. Again, those are features you can't use in light burn. That's a light burn limitation. So you'll see me use some of those in XCS. But first I set the S1 up in light burn and did a standard cut test on my hardware store plywood. And that came out great. Then I did an engraving test. Now I did have to adjust some of these values just because of the 40 watt power but it worked okay. And then I did uh, a, a, my gradient test. And again, I had to amp up the values. I actually did a gradient all the way up to 34,000 and used that to engrave the dog. Now you can see the results. Of course, no surprise at 40 watts, this thing is a, is a cutting machine. Uh, the engraving came out pretty good. It, 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 I could have done a bigger range there. Gradient test looks good around somewhere between 30,000 and 36,000 millimeters a minute. Now the dog test here, it came out okay, but this is really heinous kind of hardwood, uh, kind of plywood. So I actually redid this result on, on another piece of wood and uh, the dog came out much better where there was no heavy grain. And in fact, I also did a, a lighthouse test, uh, the lighthouse that's not too far from me, and it came out amazingly well. Before I could produce all of those great results, I had to get the laser configured. 
And Xtool provides a device configuration that you can just import into the into Lightburn to set it up. So setup was actually a breeze, but there's a couple of additional things you need to do. First of all, you need to enable pointer offset, otherwise your cuts will be in the wrong place. And then you you then need to go into the G-code setting and add this, this line in order to set the Z-axis height or Z-axis, depending on where you are, set that correctly. And uh, then everything worked okay. Next, you need to look at the macros. There's, there's a few macros that Xtool provides, and some of them are for the rotary, but there's this detect button. And what that does is detects the height that the focus should be at. So you can see it does this auto focus operation. There's a little pad over on the right-hand side that it comes down and touches with that little plunger. And when it comes back, you're in focus. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of advanced features of the S1. These are things that you just don't find on other lasers. Now because of that, that means we have to leave light burn and go to XES, but we're gonna start with contoured focusing. And let's say you have a contrived shape like this one where, where it's curved and it's on a surface and you want to engrave something across the entire curve. And the way I'm going to do that is pop into XES and I just grabbed a shape out of the shape library since it's almost Halloween, I chose a ghost. And I'm first going to tell the laser that it's not engraving something flat, it's now engraving something that's curved. And I could certainly go and look at the instructions, but I've done this before. So I'm going to measure the curve now. And what it's asking me here now is, give, is to give it the, the height of the op opposing corners. And what you do is you manually move the laser head to the first corner and hit the mark, then manually move it to the second corner and hit the mark. And, uh, and I'll do that now. It's actually pretty simple. So I'll move to the first point. And when I'm happy, I'll hit that mark button. And you can hear the laser behind me probably doing a bunch of work. And what it's doing is actually moving over to the focus reference and then moving back. And it, just to make sure that I've picked a, a measurable height here. Now I'll go to the second point. And I'll mark that one. It'll do exactly the same process for the second point. And when it has two successful measurements, I can just hit the next button. And you'll see it's drawn this array of of focus points. And what it's trying to do is build a, a profile of that contour. I don't really need to go to this kind of depth because my shape is pretty predictable. So I'll shorten this up just to make it easier. And when, when you're happy, you can just hit this start measure button and the laser will go off and test the focus height at each of those 25 points that I told it to and uh, it will build a profile. Now I won't go through, through this whole process because it'll take a minute, but basically that's what it's doing. And after the, the profile building is done, it looks like this. And you can do a few things here. You can make it smoother and let it define something for you uh, a little better. Uh, I'll just leave everything at, at its defaults here. And then I hit done. And you can see the shape that it drew here. This is basically the printable area now. So. What I gotta do is now make my ghost fit into that area. And let me zoom in here a bit. And get rid of this. So we'll squeeze him up so he fits. And we'll make him take as much area as possible. So there you go. He's, he's now fit onto the, the profile page. And at this point, it's just like any other process that I would, I would run on XES. So all I have to do is hit the process button and start. And the laser will start the job. I'm not gonna show you the whole job going, but uh, I'll show you a bit of it here in real time. It will follow the contour that was defined perfectly and that's what's important. Now, this is a carryover feature from the P2. Uh, I love the fact that it's here, but you're not gonna use it every day. However, when you do want it, it's crucial that you have it. So it's the only way to get this done and I love the fact that it's here. And you can see the output in spite of my over aggressive settings here, uh, the focus was perfect across the entire curve. So in a similar vein to the contoured focusing mechanics, Xtool also added two point positioning. Now what that is, is again, you're defining the opposite corners of a rectangle where you wanna engrave something. And it's a simple case of going into XES and clicking that start markup, and then going back to your laser and you see I have a piece of material there with a bit of a space in it where I wanna put my image. 
and I position the first point and I push the button on the front. It, it'll be blue at this point, and then I can go back to my material, position to the second point and push the button again. And when I'm done, you'll see the two points are now defined and I can hit the, the, the button there to, to go to the canvas. And you can see, again, I have a rectangle which defines the area where I'm gonna put something. So I'll drop this elephant in here and I'll size it to the, to the hole that I defined there. And after this, again, it's just like a regular job. You can hit the start and the job will begin. And you can see it's engraving right in the space where I defined those two points. And when I pop the, the material out of the laser here, you can see that the elephant is exactly where I, where I selected the, the rectangle. Uh, very nice feature. It's way better than a camera. If you've used a light burn camera, you know that it's a bit tedious to get it calibrated and it really isn't all that accurate anyway. So I think this is actually better and kudos to, to Xto for putting this in here. I love this feature. So that's the X-Tool S1, and I think it's a pretty fantastic laser, actually. I can see people putting these in their office, in their garage workshop or formal workshop if you have one. They're gonna sell tons of these. Now, one thing I haven't talked about so far is safety. This laser is a class one laser certification, which means I can run this laser without any kind of vision protection. So this green lid on the front protects me from blue laser wavelengths as well as IR wavelengths. And that's a fantastic thing. The, the lid itself has a sensor in it. If I open this laser while it's running, it'll stop. If I jar it or tilt it, it'll stop. You'll also see these four little bubbles down in the, in the workspace. These are fire detectors and they will stop the laser if it detects a fire. And there's also a number of other accessories available on the Xtool website. Uh, you can go look at those. Now, I don't have pricing information as I'm recording this. The actual release is still about a week away. Uh, but I'll put that information down in the description when I get it. I'll also put an affiliate link down there. If you are buying an S1, uh, you, I would be endlessly thankful if you use that link. Uh, it really helps out the channel. And uh, up here, you'll also see some recent members who, who joined the, the, the channel group. Uh, again, I'm thankful for that. And if you do want to become a member, you can click the join button down below. It gives you access to uh, to all of my designs, plus a little more instantaneous access to me if you need to have a question answered. And with that, we can wind down. So get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.